Hey everyone, Manny B here, welcome back. And today, we're gonna to be talking about how we can leverage deep learning image classification models for very specific use cases. If you're new here, please remember to subscribe. And if you find this video helpful, please give us a like, greatly appreciated. So as I mentioned earlier, we're gonna talk about how we can leverage these models that have been made av available by some pretty cool researchers, these image classification models. These models have been trained on millions of images on giant computes over a lot of hours. So you can take a model and pass it through an image of a gorilla, um, of a deer, of a tiger, and it'll respond back I can tell you that that's an image of a of that particular animal but oftentimes we have very specific use cases so we don't just want to predict whether or not something's a bear we want to know whether it's a particular species of bear um, if we have a photo of a house yes we know it's a house but we want to know whether or not it's in an urban setting or if it's in a rural setting so transfer learning is the technique of taking a pre-trained neural net model and lopping off the later layers of that model, the prediction layers of that model, retraining that part of the model to the particular use case that, that we're interested in. And we're gonna walk through an example today. We have a number of x-ray uh, images, uh, chest x-ray images, some of which have been diagnosed with pneumonia, others that have been deemed to be normal. With that as an intro, let's jump into the code. All right, let's get into this example. Now there's a link to this Git repo in the description of this video below. Click on that and you'll open this up in Google Colabs. The first thing you want to do is you want to get your Kaggle username and, and um, API key, you can get that from Kaggle, and drop it in here. And this will allow you to download the data directly into your Google Colab. The other thing you want to make sure of is your runtime being a GPU runtime. So go here and make sure that this is um, GPU as hardware accelerator. It's gonna make your training go faster. So I'll walk through a little bit more of this here. So we have some helper functions. So this is going to help us check out the uh, items in the individual directories. And um, this is going to help us plot the images for a particular directory. And this function helps us plot the training curve for our um, for the the training of the of the models um, over the epochs by accuracy and by loss. So we'll use that a little bit later in the code. Next thing here is we're pulling in that data from the Kaggle website. We are unzipping that data and then we're deleting some of the zip files just to clean up things a little bit. Um, then what you'll do is you'll import, you'll, you'll, you'll pull in some, some libraries to help display the data and you'll initiate your directories. So this is going to be important because the type of Keras implementation that we're using is a flow from directory implementation. So there are a couple of ways that you can leverage the Keras API. Um, there's I think three ways that are documented on the on the Keras website. The flow from directory for me was the most straightforward one to follow and it allows you to keep the 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 images in your directory and just have the data generator map to where those files are and to help build out your batch of training data, your batch of validation data, and your testing batch as well. So it's just a more straightforward implementation of the Keras API. That's the route that I recommend and that's the route that you'll see in this particular example. So to do that you'll have to you'll have to um, specify those directories. So here I have the train batch going to this train directory, the um, this validation directory, and then this test directory that we're going to use as our final proxy in terms of whether or not our model is any good. All right, so here you can click on this and this will give you a list of files in this directory, in the pneumonia directory, in the, in, in the normal directory. This will plot out your images in terms of um, whether or not they're pneumonia and whether or not they're normal. And finally, we get into the fun stuff. Okay, so, for, so what we're doing here 
is we're importing the Inception V3 image classification model and a couple of helper functions for that model to help with the pre-processing and um, also the plotting. So what, um, you'll see here that we're using the TensorFlow backend, but it's going to be the Keras API. Um, we'll, bring, we'll, we'll set up that model and we're going to initiate the weights and then we can pull in an image here to see how it, it codes the image sort of from a, an out of a box type of way. So this is without any transfer learning. If you run this, you'll see that it gives you a prediction of a water bottle, for example, because it's just way too specific for what this model has been trained for. If you were to upload an image of a gorilla here, a gorilla JPEG, it would tell you that it's a gorilla. Or if you would uh, upload a picture of a house, it would tell you that it's a house. Um, but that's a little bit too general for us. And now we're going to implement transfer learning to make that a little bit more specific for this particular use case. All right, so before we do that, we have to do some data preparation. And what you're doing here is you're creating a couple of image um, data generators. So these are gonna be batches of the underlying data that you're going to use to train your model. You're gonna have three of them. You're gonna have your train data generator, you're going to have your validation data generator that's going to be used during the training process. And then you're going to have your test data generator that is going to be used to evaluate the model at the end of it all. So you want to initiate these and set up some of the configurations for those. And then we're going to be able to pass these um, data batches into our, 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 our workflow a little bit later on. Okay, so now we get to training the model. So, uh, so if you recall earlier, we inputted the, um, we, we brought in the, 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 the full model. Here, what we're doing is we're bringing that model in again, but we're asking the top layer to um, be lopped off. So this is the prediction layer that we're going to want to retrain for our purposes. And then we'll have, we'll set up some configurations for that particular layer. And um, here we are saying um, to freeze all the layers um, that that are in the base model. We don't want to retrain all the, the the layers that we, we haven't lopped off, so we're just going to freeze those, and then we'll just um, um, finalize it here. Last couple of steps: um, compile and fit generate. So the compile is where you'll specify the type of loss that you want to optimize on, the method of optimization, and the key metric that you care about. That's here. You can actually play around with this a little bit. There's a couple of different optimizers you can use, um, and that gives you will give you some different results. So if you're looking for things to tune, that'd be a place to do it. And then lastly is we'll run our fit generator function here. And um, the key variable that I would look at is the number of epochs. So you can you can um, increase this number to 10, 15, 20, 25. And I expect you would get a better performance, but it's just gonna take a long time to train here. I'm just running five epochs. So not the best prediction, I don't think, after five epochs. But if you run it for a 2025, it may take you three hours of train, but you might get a better model. I would suspect so. So that's another knob you can turn if you're looking to increase your performance. So we're going to be uh, using some of those helper functions that we talked about earlier to plot the performance of our training run. So um, here is going to be the accuracy for the train batch, which would you know it, it makes sense at the time. Um, here's the one you care about in terms of whether or not you're getting some uplift in your validation batch, which you'll want to see with more epochs is this number to be steadily going up in a step-like fashion, in a consistent fashion. And if you had more epochs, I think you would expect you would see that. The this section is around uh, it, it losses, kind of you want the inverse here, so the lower the better, and again also a step fashion as you have more epochs. All right, so. Um, um, lastly, we'll run our evaluate our model on the test generator. So again, this is going to be a batch of 16 images, eight of which are pneumonia, eight of which are normal, and we'll get our final score here. So our final accuracy score is going to be 0.625. 
Um, this actually is pretty uh, interesting here. It's a it's a function or a method to get the classes for the 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 batch of data that you're training on. So you'll see here that zero is normal, pneumonia is one. Not that important here, but um, you still want to double check that because the way that it'll do it is my understanding is that it based on alphabetical order it'll give zero and one to the different classes. So it just so works out that p comes after n so you get the zero and the one but um that may not always be the case and also if you have multiple classes you're going you're going to um, have a, a different way to, to map into those classes so just something to keep in your back pocket as you do more projects all right so here we're generating predictions for the model on our test generator so here's the that um, vector of predictions so um, um, a series of, of ones and zeros and then here are the true labels so you're, you see here we have a couple of misses early on so the first one is a miss we're predicting pneumonia it's actually normal as are the uh, the first eight and then here um, we're, we're predicting normal but in but, we're, but it's actually pneumonia um, just at, at, from a from a, a quick glance, my sense is that this model would have pretty high recall, namely that we're predicting all of the instances of pneumonia in this particular setting. That actually might be a good thing. Um, you might want to uh, sacrifice a higher series, a uh, higher number of false positives, if it makes if it makes you uh, more likely to catch all of the true positives. So, um, uh, not, you know, not terrible, but again, you probably want some higher accuracy numbers so that you're not pestering people with a bunch of false positives. Anyhow, so this, um, this is a, a, um, a, a code chunk that will allow you to visualize the, the performance and the images for various predictions. So what you can do here is you can go to the files. I haven't go to the files section and grab one of these copy that path and then uh, paste it here and then run this code chunk and it'll output this particular image the true label here and the prediction here just sort of a nice sort of tool to kind of kind of um, help you get a sense of your predictions this is uh, a, a neat little widget I found it's a, it's a it's a form function here in this code chunk what you can do is you can um, have a variable created from the input to this form. So uh, a couple of different options, sliders, and you can in, um, assign it to something. So I thought that was a pretty nifty little widget there. All right, I hope that was helpful. Do me a favor, if you enjoyed this content, give me a like on the video and please remember to subscribe. Also, let me know what you enjoy about the videos. Um, I'm getting a lot of good feedback, um, a lot of positive comments. It would also be helpful to know what particular parts you find helpful, what questions you have. That'll give me ideas for future videos. So thanks again, and don't forget to subscribe. Talk to you guys soon. Keep hacking.